Well, hello, everybody. We're Sultans of String with special guest Mariam Toller here on Backstage. I'm just going to let the counter run down and start our show. Let us know in the chat where you're watching from. My name is Chris McCool from Sultans of String, and welcome to Backstage, brought to you through the help of Ontario Arts Council. This series runs Fridays at noon, EST, broadcasting live from Burlington. That countdown song was with uh, Kevin Leliberté on guitar, Drew Burston on the bass, and in just a moment we'll get to chat with the amazing Miriam Toller. But first, we'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, the many First Nations in the Métis, from the Anishinaabe to the Haudenosaunee, to the Huron-Wendat, to the Mississaugas of the Credit Nation, for allowing us to share their traditional lands on which we feel blessed to live, work, and play. And let us know in the chat where you're watching from, and um, it would be great to know uh, what platform you're watching from, too. If you're on Facebook, please hit that follow button. And if you're on YouTube, you can uh, ring the bell, hit subscribe, and um, then you won't miss, oh, where's that button? Oh, wrong button. Oh, there we go. There we go. Special graphics, just for you. Let us know, uh, yeah, Let, well, you'll know when we're up again next. Okay, more coffee over here. Uh, for fans of world music in Canada, Miriam Toller is practically a household name. She was a vocalist on the theme music for CBC's television's Little Mosque on the Prairie, which I watched all six seasons. She also were, uh, earned a Juno Award nomination with the Arabic Mediterranean group Maza Maze, and has been a part of numerous esteemed Middle Eastern and world music collaborations, including Murni with husband Ernie Toller, uh, Dula, Turquoise, and Al Kahwa. Please welcome to the Zoom room, Miriam Toller. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so great to have you here. Yeah. We've worked with you now like since 2006 or 2007 on our first record. That's yeah, a long time. A long time. Yeah. And uh, you're just so amazing. Like you just continually inspire um, year after year with new projects and new formulations of incredible musicians. So you're really an inspiration. Oh. Um, and now you play Canoon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! No. Which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'd love to hear a little bit of this instrument. Would you, would you tell us a bit about this instrument mm -hmm. and what it's all about? Well, um, in 1996, I went to Syria, to Aleppo, to study a kind of a tradition of Arabic music called Mu'a Shahat, which is Sufi devotional love songs. I went with my friend Rula Saeed. And at the time she was playing kanun, I was trying to learn the oud, and we were both taking singing lessons, and I was also taking Arabic tambourine lessons um, while I was there. So I would watch her with this kanun, and it looked so beautiful and so mm. fun, and... 
what I found with the qanun is um, even if you're just playing beautiful, like simple melodies, um, just to accompany yourself, it, so, it adds so much. And so uh, I came back to Canada and I couldn't stop thinking about the instrument. And so um, I just decided I need to have one. So I called my teachers in Aleppo and yeah. they had a gig in Cairo. And my mom used to go every year to Cairo. So they went to Cairo, met up with my mom, gave her the canoe. My mom got a friend to then get it to Canada. And that's how I got this uh, beautiful instrument here. And it is, um, if you've ever looked inside a piano, you'll see that every note has three strings. But in the piano, when you hit that key, it gets hammered. So it's like the inside of a piano, except instead of getting hammered, I pluck the strings. Oh, there's a lot of different modes on here for what I'm going to play. <laughs> <laughs> but you can hear it's like really beautiful and um, it's just a gorgeous sound. And um, I use it anywhere I can. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a master kanun player, but I find simple accompaniments um, when I'm performing and uh, people seem to like it. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. It yeah. sounds so beautiful and it's got this incredible reverberation, natural mm -hmm. reverberation. Um, Tell me about those, um, those metal keys on the side. What do those oh, do? Here. So when I'm tuning the canoe, I tune it to a major scale. So it would be, see here, click, click, click. And a little lever. Yes. There we go. <laughs> so I just tune it to that because then I can just use any tuner like the one on my phone to get it in tune. But right. these levers make it go flat or sharp. So this is a C major scale. But if I say need an E flat, I'll go to the E and I'll push them all down and make it minor. But in Arabic music, we don't have just major and minor scales. Um, some scales have what people call quarter tones and quarter tones aren't usually exactly in the middle. Um, this one, you can do a lot of subtle differences. So each of these little things is called a comma, but they're not actually spaced out evenly. So you can have an E half flat. And in Egypt, they like the half flat to be a little lower. In Turkey, they like it a little higher. So it almost sounds like, from, to my mm. ear, it almost sounds like a major scale. It's just a little flatter. And then, um, you would probably have heard the a typical scale people think of when they think of Arabic music is Hijaz, which is like. And my Arabic uh, music teachers call that Hollywood Hijaz <laughs> because it's just a flat, a D flat, and an, um, wait, an E flat and an F sharp. But to the um, connoisseur of Arabic music, they like it if that interval is just a little smaller. They like the E to be a little sharper and the, fl uh, the sharp to be a little flatter. And they find it tastier. So, like, you can do a lot of subtle things with these little metal levers. Well, that's, that's, yeah. that's a great <laughs> overview. Um, why don't you uh, play us a, a, a little improv on there and then we'll come back and talk more about it. Okay. I'm going to play a song, a typical f song form called a doleb. And a doleb is a, an inst a little instrumental ditty that kind of sets up your ear for whatever scale the songs are going to be in, in your mm. medley. Usually they do a medley of songs in one maqam or one scale. So this one is in G bayet, and it has one of those quarter tones. It's A half flat. And uh, this is how it goes. And I'm going to ask uh, Kevin and Drew if they want to, if they feel like joining in. They can right do a little uh, rhythmic thing for me. Oopsie.
beautiful. Uh. <laughs> what a what a what a wonderful wonderful instrument. Um, tell me, if you're in a band, mm -hmm. so you, it's like bringing a piano to the group, right? So yeah. everyone has to tune to you, I guess. Oh yeah, especially because it <laughs> takes me so long to tune. Right. And um, so even there are some rehearsals. I'll get there and I'll have had a really busy day and I'll just fly in and I won't have had time to actually tune it. So they'll just tune to me. Right. <laughs> they have less strings, so whatever. <laughs> now you play that instrument um, in a new, well, it's not really a new band. You've got three albums out yes. now with Al Cahua. That's right. And uh, your newest album, African Roots. Um, oh, here's, here's the band. And we know all these lovely people. Mm -hmm. um, there's Ernie, your husband, and Demetrios on Oud, and Nagme Fairman, who's on backstage next week, next Friday. And this is the new album, African Roots. And it's really beautiful because you can hear all the flavors um, from all these wonderful Toronto players who have come here from around the globe, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is such a great thing about Toronto. So in addition to the regular band members, you've got Walid Abdul Hamid, who's yes. going to be on backstage end of the month, and Fethi Najim on Kora, mm -hmm. and Rula Saeed mm -hmm. doing zills and dance. Um, tell me about this project. It's... Um, you have so many different uh, formulations. How did you come up with this particular group of musicians, and what are you trying to tell through this band? Well, Al Qahwa, um, it came about because of a Tafel music project that I was in. They, it's, it was a project called Tales of Two Cities, mm. the Leipzig Damascus Coffee House, or Coffee Houses, and it was talking about coffee house culture in the Baroque times in Germany, but a parallel coffee house culture that was happening in uh, Damascus at the same time because uh, Leipzig and Damascus were both crossroads for like travelers mm. and that's where a lot of people would go to hear the news of the day, they would hear poetry, they would be entertained by music and of course they would be drinking a lot of coffee. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, Nerma Dimitri and I were on, on that project and we learned... Um, well, I already knew, I, I shared a lot of the repertoire I had learned when I was in yeah. Aleppo, Syria with them. And we toured that um, in the United States and in Canada. And um, so we made our first CD just doing the repertoire we did in that show. And of course, I love adding flute to it, and I'm married to a, a wonderful <laughs> flute player. And, and so the Ernie, best. yes. And so Ernie joined us for that CD, even though we weren't officially a group, it was our first CD. Yeah. And it was called Al Qahwa. And then um, we decided we wanted to continue with it, and we started doing projects where we would invite guests. So the second mm -hmm. album, we invited um, one of my teachers who has uh, since passed away, but Alf Dr. Alfred Gamil yes, from Egypt. Such an incredible player. Yes. Wow. And very adventurous, very yeah. fun, loves to play and try different things. And so our second, and we also invited a local musician who's also now my singing teacher, um, Majd Sukkar. Um, oh, and I fantastic. just received more funding to study with him. I'm so grateful Yay! because, yeah, <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, he is, we're very lucky in Toronto. We oh, have amazing people. Embarrassment of riches. Yes. Eh? And so our second CD is called Cairo Moon and it had those two guests and we featured music of Egypt as well as um, compositions by me, who's an Egyptian and Alfred, who's an Egyptian. <laughs> and, um, and also um, songs that we could tie to Cairo or to Egypt. And then our last album is the one that you mentioned, African Roots. Mm -hmm. And that one, uh, we called it that because Walid is from Sudan, I'm from Egypt, and um, Fethi is from Algeria. So all three of us are based in North Africa, uh, our origins. And um, so all the music on there is either inspired by music of North Africa mm -hmm. or from, from there. And yeah. And if people want to see it live, you're playing this Sunday, aren't I you? I am at Zeza Foon. It's a beautiful, sweet... Uh, restaurant where they have live music and the most amazing food. And, um, <laughs> okay, so Yeah, so p come on down. Uh, make a reservation, though, if you do plan to come, because it is um, limited seating. This so. is in Toronto? Yes, and it's on Sunday. So the food is at served night. at 7.30 yeah. p.m., and then the music will start at 8.30, and it'll be myself, Dimitri Petsalakis, Ernie Toller, and Walid Abdul Hamid. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and I put a link to, I think, your Facebook page, which oh, has some of the details yes. somewhere on one of those things that I uploaded. Know. I don't know where it is. Yes. Let's play another song. <laughs> okay. um, there was a Sufi devotional love song you were playing 
earlier mm-hmm. when you were warming up. Could you tell us a little bit about this? Yes. So, what, like I said, I went to Syria in 1996 to learn this style of music. And this is a song that I learned while I was there. It's called Zoran al Mahboub, which means the beloved visited me. And um, I like, with my arrangements, I actually don't usually do very traditional ones. So, the arrangement you're going to hear is not at all traditional. Um, I just come up with these kind of trancey ways of playing that I think go very well with the style because the whole idea of these uh, songs is the poetry and the rhythm um, is very hypnotic and gets you out of your earthly body and into the zone of uh, connecting with the beloved. And this has a particular scale. Remind us what the oh, yes. scale is. This is um, called uh, Hejaz Kar. Um, which is but for most of the song there's a lot of accidentals so it's a tricky one you're going to hear all kinds of notes in this one gorgeous song and performed so beautifully. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you. And hello, Madge. Uh, great to see you here. And um, yeah, so many wonderful musical friends here. Um, now, I'm going to take this out a little bit to left field. Um, there's a kind of an interesting side project that you do with Rula. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't I play? <laughs> I'll play 60 seconds of this clip and then right. we'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> when it's Christmas time and there's so much snow and you got no place to go, all 
There's a shop that blows, you go to red, red nose, and you don't want to catch a cold or COVID. You see the city so bright, it's like the Broadway lights, and you get some inspiration. When airplanes get the Christmas blues, they make it better right away, cause they know what to do, they just sing Christmas carols written by Jews. <laughs> that is so awesome. Like, yeah. Everything about it I love. I know. Me too. The accents, <laughs> the video. Tell us about that. Like, how did this come about? I, I know, like, I was watching all the videos around the holiday season just laughing yeah. my butt off. Well, um, it actually started when um, COVID hit and we were all just in lockdowns and just hanging out in our houses. Rilla and I live in the same house. And we often. Um, joke around, and we're both of Arab origin. I'm from Egypt, she's from Palestine. And um, we often talk in Arabic accents, like just imitating our parents and, you know. <laughs> and sometimes we get into such a flow, it's hard not to talk, talk in an Arabic accent when I'm talking to her. <laughs> and so we would go on these walks during the pandemic and just notice things and observe things. And we'd be talking in these accents and then we'd crack ourselves up and make ourselves laugh our heads off. So then we started saying, oh, that's good, that's good, we gotta videotape that. And so we, we started videotaping ourselves, like yeah. little one minute, two minute videos, just observing things and then posting them. And it got a really good response. People yeah. were like, oh my God, I need more of that. Cause everybody was bored. And, yeah. um, and um, more and more people were like, make a YouTube channel. You gotta, you know, do something more with yeah. this. And Rilla, um, for a long time, before Fauk even began, which is the Friggin' Arab Orchestra Company, that's a, what our group what is, our duo, group. our comedy yeah. duo is. Um, sh she had the idea, because she is married to David Bookbinder, yep. who is um, a very well-known Jewish performer and um, started Ashkenaz Festival. And she always thought, oh, it's so interesting. I think it was from him that she found out all these Christmas carols, because her family is Christian. Yeah. Uh, were written by Jewish composers. And she always thought, oh, they, we should have a song called Arab Ladies Sing Christmas Carols, written by Jews, to take yeah. it one step further. And Perfect. then we were inspired. And so I wrote a verse, she wrote a verse, we put it together. Um, David arranged the song. Uh, our kids played on it, Yoshka and yeah. Layla. You know, it became a kind of family band. Ernie was in it, you know. What a, I, I hope it explodes. I hope that it gets really huge. Oh, thanks. Because it's just so much fun. It's got a little bit of... Um, um, like the, the banter, it's got a little bit of the Bob and Doug McKenzie. Oh, yeah, yeah, throwback. totally. <laughs> right? Totally. Was that kind of a new, maybe, maybe all of us in Canada have that. In yeah, the back we definitely of our have that. We definitely have that. <laughs> you yeah. can't get away with <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, so, Miriam, I have to say that on a personal level, you've been very inspirational to me that, you know, when creating this band, Sultans of String, with Kevin and Drew, like, Bands like Maza Maze were really like super, super influential. And you were doing this, um, I guess, like how old is, how far back does Maza Maze go now? Um, it might be 30. Yeah. <laughs> I don't See, know. It's I really I, old. <laughs> I think I saw you perform with mm. Maza Maze in the alley at McGill when I was studying there. Really? Yeah. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. But so you have so many different projects. How do you balance being in a half a dozen or more working bands? Um, well, part of it is I love all kinds of music and I have so many ideas and I want to do them all. And <laughs> often what happens is um, I can't like, it would be a very weird group if it had all the different kinds of right. music that I like to perform. So in a way, I need the different projects um, because different repertoire right. fits in to the different yeah. things I do. And um, so, yeah, Mazem Azay started just from a group of us who were taking Arabic singing lessons with yeah. our teacher, Dr. George Sawa yeah. in Toronto. Amazing. And then we're like, we should too. play this somewhere. People would really like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah. I just keep having new ones. Like I have a new group now with uh, Walid and Ernie and my friend, her name is Shamima Sony, called Lua. Whoa, I don't even know about I this I know, one. it's a brand new group. <laughs> and um, it's awesome. But, I love it so okay, much. Okay, so, but I'm yeah. confused. So you've got Al Kahwa yes. and this new one, Lua. And yeah, Turquoise. Turquoise. And, so, and Falk. And Falk. <laughs> so, so how do you, like, how do you find time to put energy in it? Like just on, uh, for me, what I did, 
uh, in my own life is yes. like, instead of splitting myself into, so we've created this kind of open architecture with our band Sultans of Strings so we can work with all kinds of people. Yeah. Uh, this like, kind of like the opposite approach. What's, is there one that's easier than the other? Like, okay, so a bunch of pro, um, programs that are very narrowly focused versus one program that's, yeah. like, could, could you have done all this with Mernie? Um, I could have, and in a way, I was trying to do that with Mernie, I, and it was, and our first CD goes yeah. all over the place, yeah. but that was, the, un, the feedback was, because it was so all over the place, it was like, right. what is this? How right. do we deal with this? I right. don't know what's going on. Right. Um, right. And so, I think the way you've done it is kind of cool, because you kind of have a focus when you have different guests and you're working with different kinds of people. It is a very huge range of music that you're doing, but it can be focused on a theme. Like, in a way, like your um, Refuge album, for instance, it's a theme, but there are so many people from so many different places, you can mm -hmm. be very open. So, But there's something that ties it all together. Yeah, yeah, so I couldn't figure out like a way project. to do that. Yeah. And I don't think I'm as organized as you. Well, you're, because you're doing other, <laughs> yeah. you're 10 different bands. But not only that, not only that, but now you're a very in-demand actor. Well, I don't know if I'm an in-demand actor, but well, I booked. am you're acting, booked. and I'm you're very booked. excited, yeah. Um, the funny thing is, bef I, I'm also a teacher, a school teacher, but before I became a school teacher, I was trying to figure out I don't know how, you how do I make more money, because I had three kids, right. and... Um, Ernie and I are both musicians, and I, ha I so I was actually trying all kinds of things. So I actually did try acting before I became a teacher, and I got into a play. I auditioned, and I got into a play that actually even was nominated for a Dora. Fantastic. Which yeah. one was that? It was called Nine Parts of Desire. Okay. And um, so that was very fun and terrifying, um, but... So I, but I did have it in me, and in high school I did used to act. I was in like the performing arts um, yeah. classes and everything. But this came along because um, a few years ago I got a call from Elisa Palmer. She's a director at the National Theatre School, saying, um, asking if I would be in a workshop of. Um, uh, you may have heard of the book Fall on Your Knees by Anne Marie MacDonald. If you're from my generation, you definitely have heard of right. it. Like, and Lebanese heritage. Yes. That you know oh, yeah. About it, right? And Canadian. Yeah. All of that. Everything. And she actually won an Order of Canada, I believe, a yeah. couple of years ago, too. But anyway, so when she asked me to be a part of that as a musician to workshop some music, because they wanted to do a stage adaptation of that book. And I was like, oh my God, yes, yes. <laughs> and I was so excited. <laughs> and. Um, and we did two workshop performances and got it to a point where they were able to show it to um, important people, I guess, yeah. in the theater world. And it got the go ahead to take it to the next level and um, make it a stage play that's going to be touring from coast to coast. And then COVID hit. Ooh. So that put a slow things down, but in a way it gave it time to uh, gel a bit more because I know that during COVID they worked on just the script and really refining it and getting it mm -hmm. to a really good point. And then about, it might have been about a year ago now I got a call because I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm even in the project anymore. <laughs> but I got a call um, and the, Elisa said, I want to talk to you about your involvement in the project. And she asked me to audition for a part. And I was like, oh my God, because I actually thought I should audition for a part, well, but I never thought, I, I would never dare say oh. that because I'm not an actor. And, Which but when part? She, so uh, the book is based in the East Coast and there's yeah. an Arab family. Yeah. And then there's this, um, uh, an East Coast guy from like Scottish origins or whatever. And he's yeah. young, he's 17 and he's a piano tuner. And he tunes the piano in this Arab family's house. And the young daughter and him fall in love. And I'm the mother of that young daughter. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. Are you doing this in your folk accent? I'm not going to do it in the folk <laughs> accent. If I do it with an accent, it's going to be a real accent, Yanni. I'm not going to try to make people laugh from my talking, Yanni. Yeah, yeah. uh, on that <laughs> note, here, let's play another song. Sure. Um, what is this? Oh, we're going to do... I know what we're going to do. Yeah, we were speaking about uh, um, the we're, song from the Islamic tradition, yes. the song to the Prophet Muhammad. Yes, so this song um, is a song that is well known uh, to the Muslim community, especially the Arab Muslim community. And it's the story goes that this song was sung to the Prophet Muhammad at a time when his life was in danger in Mecca. He, uh, he was being threatened and 
they were sure he would be killed actually if he stayed. And so his supporters went ahead to Medina um, because they were also being um, punished for following um, Islam. And he was going to go uh, in the dark of the night um, and his cousin slept in his bed to kind of be a decoy and he went off and was on this long journey by himself and then finally when he arrived to Mecca his supporters supposedly sang this song to him and it's called Tal al Badru Alina. It means the full moon rose above us and it's a, a metaphor for the prophet, like uh, that the prophet is like the full moon. So this is Tal al Badru Alina. طالع البدر علينا من ثانيات الوداع وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا And wouldn't you love to be greeted <laughs> walking into a community with a song like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see a few friends here. John Davidson, fantastic photographer, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going to come out, take some photos of us in a couple of days. Really looking forward to that. And Marilyn, real incredible supporter of world music here in Canada. Nice to have you with us. And Robert Lawrence <laughs> uh, from Rochester, New York. Fantastic. Um, so, uh, many of us are reeling from the election results last night. Um, it's, you know, anyone who knows me knows it's not, <laughs> not what I had hoped for. In the last federal election, you actually ran... Oh, yeah. <laughs> for <a> <laughs> you were in the running yes. for the Greens on Danforth. That's right. I'm, I'm just... I'm fascinated by that. So what, um, <laughs> what propelled you to run for election? And what was that experience like as a musician, someone who's already a public figure and a teacher? And you know a lot of how the world is put together. Mm -hmm. You're a very worldly person. So, so what did it mean to you to run in that election? And, and well, um, I really feel strongly about the fact that the number one issue that should be concerning every single person in this whole planet is the environment and taking care of it. And so even before I ran, I started actually voting green 
in every election. And then um, my, one of my kids recently, uh, well, before the federal election, said to me, should we, asked if we should start preparing for the apocalypse. And I said, <laughs> what do you mean? And then um, um, they said that maybe we should get some canned food and maybe we'll live a week or two longer. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I have to do more than just vote green. And um, it really affected me. And so I decided to put myself forward um, because um, I think the Green Party is a great party. And yes, I know in the federal election there was a lot of problems <laughs> and PR problems. But um, I tried to focus on what the number one thing is about everybody who's a part of the Green Party, which is they all care so deeply and passionately about the environment. And so that's... and. I feel like that is the only party that puts it number, absolutely number one. And there's things I like about different parties, but I, it's the only one I felt I could go in with and be really, feel really good about. And so I tried to actually be the representative in my own riding. Mm. I didn't win the nomination contest, but I had gone through all the vetting and everything. Yeah. And then the election was called so quickly. Normally the Greens like to try to have somebody in every single riding in the country. So Danforth was looking for somebody, mm. and I was already vetted, and so it's my riding place. association, and I taught there, and so I yeah. don't want to just run in a place I have no connection with, but I felt I have a connection with that community. Yeah. I've taught in that community. I go there regularly and, um, because I have lots of friends who live there, and so it was a great experience, not enough time, yeah. not enough planning <laughs> on my part, but I did the best I could. Well, congratulations. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough slog. To, yes. to run, and thank you for doing that. It's amazing public service. Will you do it again? Will you run again? I may. Like, um, things are actually, as things are opening up again, getting very busy uh, with my art, and so I'm excited to be doing that. And, of course, <laughs> I preach. Like, anybody who yeah. asks, I'm, I'll, you know, try to help out the green cause, but um, if I run again, it'll probably not be for a few years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it won't be another, what is it, three and a half, years yeah, anyway of, so yeah, exactly. who knows yeah <laughs> um i guess um is there anything else um that you wanted to share of what what's coming up for you do you have any gigs coming up with turquoise oh i do actually um we have a very exciting concert coming up um we received funding again before covid happened Amazing. to do three special concerts because we have uh we mainly do turkish music arabic music and greek music and then all of us also have a, a love of Balkan repertoire, mm. Balkan vocal music repertoire. And so we, just, we got funding to do a series of three concerts. Mm -hmm. And we've done one already um, with this wonderful newcomer from... Uh, he isn't Canadian, he's Macedonian, but he's in Canada at the moment, Nizo Alimov. Um, we shared a bill with him and his family. His wife is a dancer, his son plays sax, and his youngest son even plays uh, some percussion. And our second concert's coming up, and it's going to be at the Transac with Moneka Arabic Jazz. Fantastic. Yeah. A double bill. A double bill. Our and favorite Turquoise. musicians. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we're learning some Iraqi songs with Ahmed right now, yeah. and we're loving it. It's, and it's going to be an amazing night. I already know it's going to be totally amazing. <laughs> All right. So look for that on your Facebook. Yeah. June 23rd. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Well, um, just before we uh, say bye to everyone, I just want to let everyone know what we're up to as well. Um, next week on Backstage, we have Nagme Faraman, who plays with Mariam. She is a world-class percussionist. She's really amazing. After that, we've got Emily Zhu. Um, she plays uh, the Erhu. And so I'm hoping to get a free Erhu lesson when she comes, or at least get, <laughs> get my set up better. After that, we've got Walid. Abdul Hamid, um, really wonderful, wonderful musician, playing some of his music. And we're taking a break for Canada Day, and then we're back on July 8th with Mark Marilainen. I'm a bit of a fanboy of Mark, so I'm looking forward to, well, I'm looking forward to all of these. And, um, and hello, Lawrence. Absolutely, we are super looking forward to joining Lawrence and playing the Our World Festival on June 12th in Kitchener. That'll be very, very fun. Uh, we played at the 5th anniversary and the 10th anniversary. And uh, coming up now is the 15th anniversary. It's a wonderful, wonderful festival. It's all free. 
at the uh, Kitchener Market area. Tomorrow, if you're, in, <laughs> if you're in Toronto area, we're playing with Saskia Tompkins as part of Acoustic Harvest. That's tomorrow night, that's Saturday. And uh, what is this? Oh, look at this. Wow, fantastic. Okay, I have to look that up. Um, what else have we got to say? Um, follow Mariam. <laughs> Check out her music. Buy her music, amplify her voice. <laughs> and let's hear a little bit of music here. This is a very cool riff. Thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks, Nicole. Always great to see you here. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you next week. Take good care of each other. <laughs>